Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the featured bout of the evening. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! We are live from New York, where it is a brand new year for Matchroom Boxing, the first show of 2023, bringing us to the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, where fans may receive a double dose of history. Four women vying for a shot at being crowned undisputed in their respective weight classes. It is fight week, and it begins now. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Justin Shackle welcoming you to New York City for Matchroom Boxing's kickoff to fight week for Serrano Cruz. This Saturday night on DAZN, the seven division world champion Amanda Serrano is back in the ring taking on the WBA featherweight champ Erica Cruz for a shot at being undisputed at 126 pounds. In the co-feature, you have the unified super featherweight champion, Alicia Bumgarner, stepping into the ring, trying to complete the puzzle at 126 when she takes on Frances Ellen Mechelad. That is an undisputed clash at 130 pounds. So in theory, we could be crowning just the seventh and eighth undisputed champions in the four belt era in women's boxing history. And it could come in back to back matches. There's a lot of other hardware on the line on Saturday night. We have a WBC title eliminator, plenty of regional belts at stake as well as several young fighters try to ascend the ladder and build themselves into true title contenders and we're going to meet all the fighters in just a few moments here at the press conference to kick off the 2023 opener for matchroom boxing amanda serrano no stranger to this building it was back in april where she clashed with katie taylor in an epic battle in the big room at madison square garden many proclaimed it as the fight of the year in 2022 and the rumors are swirling if a win for Serrano on Saturday night comes to be, well, we have a rematch sometime here in 2023. The only thing on her mind right now is taking care of business and trying to dethrone the WBA champ in Erica Cruz, who is vying to become the second undisputed fighter in Mexico's history, joining the great Canelo Alvarez. It is Puerto Rico and Mexico, a lot at stake in that main event. And we mentioned Alicia Bumgarner in that co-feature. It was back in October where she was able to unify the championship by defeating Michaela Meyer. She is back in the ring, back in the U.S. as well. We tend to forget Alicia Bumgarner has been able to build herself and surge to the position she's in now by building her career across the sea in the UK, proving herself on foreign soil. She's back in her homeland in the U.S. and thrilled to be making this defense of her titles and try to become undisputed on American soil. We'll also see Brooklyn board and bred Richardson Hitchens in his second fight under the Matchroom brand as he takes on John Baza. And then in the opener, the Matchroom debut of Yankel Rivera. He is in line making another appearance at 112 pounds to start off the main card. Before the bell kicks off at 4.15 Eastern, we mentioned the title eliminator, Jadeza Green, Elin Setaru's going at it there. We'll also see the return of Ramla Ali. Sky Nicholson is back in the U.S. for a third time in her pro career after a memorable first year as a pro in her campaign. There you see the unified champ, Alicia Bumgarner, as the fighters are waiting to take the stage here at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. We talked about the big fight in the big room in April, but Serrano is no stranger to the Hulu Theater as well. This will be her third time appearing in the Hulu Theater. She packs the house, plenty of Puerto Rican support for Serrano. And this will be, like we said, the third time here. She started the puzzle of uh, becoming undisputed, on the road to becoming undisputed by taking down Heather Hardy in the fall of 2019. She captured the WBO title there, and she is one step away from completing that puzzle at 126 pounds. When you think about it, Serrano says this is the most meaningful stage in her career because it'll be the first time that she 
can possibly become undisputed, and it'll happen at 126 pounds, her true division. She says this is her signature division. She's been pulled in every other direction, as many women boxers have to do, but this is her signature division. It would mean a lot to her to become undisputed at 126. Let's take a look at what is in store in the coming days leading up to Saturday night for Serrano Cruz here in New York. a straight fighter. It doesn't get much bigger than this. She wants to make history. The big room rocking on April the 30th with Taylor and Serrano. Many feel Amanda Serrano came away victorious. A memorable split decision between those two fighters. And again, it is on everyone's mind. Will we see the rematch here in 2023. First, visit to 10 2 Saturday night. And we kick it off with the preliminary bouts and some of the fighters that you're going to see in Matchroom's 2023 opener. Without further ado, let's end it to the stage. Back in New York, it's Matchroom Chairman Eddie Hearn. Well, thank you, Justin, and welcome everybody today. A huge turnout to the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden. What an honor to be back in this incredible building, of course. Last April, April 30th, the night that will go down in history as one of the greatest fights, one of the greatest events in the history of Madison Square Garden when Amanda Serrano faced off against Katie Taylor in a tremendous fight for the Undisputed Lightweight World Championship. This Saturday, live on the zone around the world, Amanda Serrano will bid to make history to become Undisputed Champion against reigning world champion Erica Cruz. It's Puerto Rico against Mexico. Of course, the co-main event as well, Alicia Baumgardner looking to become Undisputed as well against Eric Mechaled of France in another Undisputed matchup. 126, 130 Undisputed Championships on the line this weekend. Of course, we want to thank everybody here at Madison Square Garden, Sal and Joel and the team. Thanks for the hospitality at the Knicks against Lakers game this week. It was a tremendous event, but it also reminds me how great our own sport is. When we see great occasions, when we see great atmospheres, when we see great fights. And on Saturday night, you've got a tremendous card from top to bottom. It's going to be packed out in the Hulu Theatre. Massive Puerto Rican fan base as well coming to support Amanda Serrano. Incredible card, which we're going to be running through with you guys today. And we're going to start with three young prospects that we can't wait to see in action. Yankee Riviera, our latest signing, Puerto Rican Olympic star, looking to have a big step up on Saturday night via our, our translator here as well. Yankee, welcome to the Matchroom team. A huge night for yourself, for Puerto Rican boxing, and of course, Madison Square Garden for you on Saturday night. Bienvenido en primer lugar eh, al equipo. Obviamente eh, acabas de firmar con Matchroom. Es una muy gran noche para Puerto Rico en Madison Square Garden. Cuéntanos un poco. Mira, eh, primero que nada saludo a todos, eh, dándole las gracias a Dios. Y gracias a ti, Eddie, al equipo de Matchroom, a Kevin Rooney, a Dazón. Estoy con, bien contento, estoy bien agradecido ¿verdad? Por, por la oportunidad. Y voy a lucir excelente este sábado. Yes, yeah, so first and foremost, I just want to say thank you. Thanks to Matchroom for getting me involved in the team. It's great to be here. I'm really grateful to Matchroom, to Kevin Rooney, to the zone. I'm really looking forward to, to shining on, in my opportunity on Saturday night. You're part of a electric weight classes or divisions where there are so many super fights. You know, you have our very own Julio Cesar Martinez in the flyweight division, Jesse Rodriguez about to fight for the flyweight world championship, Galau Yafai, you know from the Olympics, uh, ready to take his chance at a world championship, Chocolatito, Estrada. You want to move very quickly, you know, just three fights, but a big step up for you on Saturday and some huge fights to take place in the division. Obviamente, um, muchas grandes peleas que existen en, en tu peso, en tu división. Galau Yafai, tienes uh, Jesse Rodriguez, Sabes, obviamente conoces a Gal Yafai de las Olimpiadas, Chocolatito, muchas grandes oportunidades. Una oportunidad, solo tienes tres peleas, pero una oportunidad para subir y poner tu sello en, en esa división. Sí, como, como mencionaste, eh, grandes nombres ahí en la división. Eh, nosotros pues estamos, sabemos que tenemos el calibre para estar ahí, eh, trabajar duro y, y aprovechar las oportunidades. Y en algún momento, pues, estaremos también entre los grandes nombres. 
Yes, so hopefully we'll be among the great names. If you said there's some great names in the division, it's an opportunity to show my calibre through hard work, and hopefully we can add our names to the list in that division. Yankee, welcome to the team. Good luck on Saturday night. We move to my left. Well, I should have brought my glasses. We've got two young cats here, rocking the style. Firstly, Harley Medeiros, welcome. Big night for you, of course. Great young prospect of American boxing, but just down the road in Brooklyn. Big opportunity for you, Madison Square Garden on Saturday night. Looking forward to getting down to action. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be, I'm happy to be performing on such a big card on, here at home. Obviously, you're among great prospects as well. So many great prospects coming through in American boxing. What, what makes you different? What makes you stand out? We know you're moving fast. Kevin Rooney and the team speaking very highly about you as well, but ready to move quickly in the pro ranks. Um, I don't know what makes me different. I mean, I guess my ability to adjust, um, no matter who you put in front of me. Um, I'm me. I can't really say what makes me different. I mean, I, that's something that you have to see for yourself here Saturday night. And one thing we have seen is huge support from you, very popular around here. It's going to be a hell of an occasion on Saturday night fighting in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here at home, um, I have a lot of great support, a lot of people behind me, and I'm grateful and appreciative of that. Um, and all the love I've been getting from everybody, even the main Serrano, she's been, you know, and the team support everybody. I appreciate everything. Look forward to seeing you in action on Saturday night, Harley. Aaron Aponte, I've got to say, Aaron, I'm a massive fan of you. You know why? Because as, an, as a prospect in the sport of boxing, you're continuously taking tough fights. You know, you went over to Mexico for a tough fight, got the win there. On the Canelo Alvarez fight, you fought one of Eddie Reynoso's charges, who's supposed to be the next big thing. It was an unbelievable fight uh, in Mexico as well. And now, uh, in, in Las Vegas, sorry, and now another tough fight for you. You, you're enjoying putting yourself in the deep end of boxing early. And we say to young prospects all the time, they're the type of fights where you're going to really learn and develop as a professional. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you, Matchroom, DAZN, Peter Kahn, and my whole team for getting me here. You know, we, we like taking these, these risks to develop myself, as, develop myself and my career and just become better and better with every fight. Obviously, traveling is, is key to a development of a young fighter, but being part of a Canelo Alvarez card like you were last time, amazing twice. experience twice, but last time really in the deep end in a really tough fight. But that must give you the confidence to come through. I mean, now it's quite amazing that you go from two Canelo Alvarez fights, you know, obviously last, Las Vegas last time out, this time to Madison Square Garden. Life is pretty good for you. <laughs> yeah, um, things are looking good, you know. I keep taking these chances, and you keep putting people in front of me, and I'm going to keep taking them down. And finally, the atmosphere as well. You know, you've got Amanda Serrano, you've got Yankee Riviera as well. It's going to be great support for you in the arena on Saturday. Yeah, um, it's a Puerto Rican day on February 4th, and we're going to make a, we're going to make a big show, uh, me and everybody else. Well, I look forward to it. Harley, Aaron, and Yankee. Watch this space. Three tremendous prospects in the world of boxing ready to continue their rise on Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. We have a photo here, and we'll move to our next couple of fights. So you are three of the uh, younger prospects under the Matchroom brand here as we get set to go for the 2023 opener in New York City. Ankel Rivera, Aaron Aponte, Harley Medeiros. Eddie and Aaron Aponte ending this session. Aponte doing a great job on that Canelo Triple G3 undercard in Las Vegas, talking about that split draw with Fernando Molina. That was a terrific form of matchmaking, and it lived up to the billing. And Aponte said yesterday that fight increased his boxing IQ. I think you're going to see it moving forward here in 2023 as he continues to grow and build himself up into a contender. We also saw Harley Medeiros there, a native of Brooklyn. You're going to see a, a pretty good clash between he and Julio Madera on the before the bell card. And then Yankel Rivera, who we're going to be talking to in just a few moments, on the main card, the 25-year-old out of Puerto Rico. He's going to be here in the support. A lot of Puerto Rican support, obviously, coming up this Saturday, backing up Amanda Serrano on the main card. But they're going to be coming out early and often to see the Puerto Rican Olympian, Yankel Rivera, who signed with Matchroom Boxing just last month. There you get a good look at him right there. 
It'll be eight rounds at 112 pounds as he takes on the 11-2-1 Fernando Diaz. If, if you recall, this time last year, our first show in Phoenix, it was Fernando Diaz who was set to, uh, set to take on Jesse Bam Rodriguez. We all know what happened there. Bam Rodriguez moved up to face Carlos Quadras in the main event. He captured the WBC Super Flyweight title. Uh, Diaz came away victorious as he remained on the card and came away victorious with a unanimous decision. He's trying to bounce back from a pro defeat in his last outing. But again, 11-2-1 with three knockouts. And we're going to welcome Bianca Rivera to the studio here in just a few moments. We'll be joined by our interpreter, Kieran Simpson, who you heard moments ago. Rivera, 2-0, two, two knockouts. Bianca, welcome to New York. Congratulations on being one of the newest matchroom signees. And I'm sure you're very, very excited for Saturday night. You heard Eddie talk about some of the names at flyweight, super flyweight that are under the Matchroom umbrella. How much did that influence your decision to sign with Matchroom? Sí, obviamente, en primer lugar, eh, eh, bienvenido aquí. Acabas de firmar con Matchroom y tienes que estar muy contento. Ahora, pensando un poco de los nombres que estaba mencionando Eddie Hearn, los grandes nombres que existen son no solamente en Mosca, sino Super Mosca también. Te tienes que estar muy, muy, muy interesado en las posibilidades que puede significar tu futuro. Saludos primero que nada, eh, dándole las gracias otra vez, ¿verdad? A, a, al equipo de Mushroom, a, a Eddie, a Kevin Rooney, eh, dándole las gracias a Peter, a, a Miguel Ortega, eh, ¿verdad? Y a todo mi equipo de trabajo también. Eh, sí, no, sin duda alguna hay grandes nombres eh, en la división, eh, tanto Mosca como Super Mosca. Y, y pues nosotros estamos, como quien dice, comenzando, nosotros estamos en el comienzo, pero. Ya pronto también estaremos entre esos grandes nombres. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to once again say hello to everyone and thank Matchroom, thank Eddie Hearn, thank Kelly, Kevin Rooney, uh, Peter, Mr. Ortega as well, my team. And there's no doubt there are massive names in the division, not just at Fly, but at Superfly as well. But we hope that, you know, if we continue to work hard, that we can be in the big leagues with those names as well. Okay, well, congratulations. We're looking forward to watching you here on the main card. Uh, thanks for the time here. We're going to throw it back to the stage with Eddie Hearn. Well, welcome back. Uh, look, you talk about the rise of, of female boxing, and we know that the main event on Saturday night is an undisputed championship. We know that the co-main event is an undisputed female championship as well. But there are five female fights on this card on Saturday night. Honestly, unintentionally, this wasn't a desire to make this a female-heavy card, and that's a great sign for female boxing. We all talk about the distinguishment between male boxing and female boxing. It's really irrelevant. Fights stand alone on their quality, their excitement, their competitiveness, and their value to the card. World championships on the line, but four undefeated fighters up here that are looking to challenge four world titles in 2023. Sky Nicholson from Australia, 5-0, going for the WBC silver title against Tanya Alvarez, 7-0 as well. Ramla Ali, 6-0. Seven and oh, I knew I was. It was six or so. I knew I was going to get there. against Avril Mathy. Eight and oh, um, really two fantastically matched fights for all four fighters looking to progress for a shot at the world title in 2023. Tanya, welcome first of all via our translator there. Undefeated fighter, uh, an opportunity to come from Spain to fight at Madison Square Garden. This is a big moment for your career. Primero lugar, bienvenido. Es, uh... Obviamente, es peleador en Victa también. Es una gran oportunidad para ti venir de España, pelear en Madison Square Garden. ¿Qué tan grande es? Bueno, pues eh, lo primero de todo, muchísimas gracias eh, a Matrum por haberme dado la oportunidad de estar aquí. Eh, estoy muy agradecida, muy emocionada y me hace mucha ilusión el poder pelear aquí en el Madison. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you very much, Machu, for the opportunity to be here. And I just have to say that I'm delighted, I'm really happy to be here fighting at Madison Square Garden. It's quite unusual in, in boxing to see, you know, 5-0 and against 7-0, and 7-0 and against 8-0. and But it seems like female fighters ready to take chances, ready to take opportunities. And, and this is a big one for you. Es, no es habitual ver los, los boxeadores femeniles enfrentar a los que tienen un récord invicto, 5 a 0, 7 a 0, 8 a 0, esos aquí, pero parece que esta pelea da, da todo. Es obviamente una gran oportunidad para ti el sábado por la noche. Pues sí, para mí es una gran oportunidad. Eh, somos dos invictas que, bueno, vamos a luchar por el título de la WBC Silver 
Y sí, es una oportunidad muy grande y yo pienso aprovecharla al máximo. Yes, obviously, as you say, it's, it's a big opportunity fighting for this WBC silver title, and it's, a, it's an opportunity that I'm looking to take and grab with both hands on Saturday night. Sky Nicholson, last time out, winning the Commonwealth Championship in Australia, now the WBC silver title. This is the kind of fight that you've been looking for, the kind of challenge now against this improved opposition. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, every fight now is uh, a stepping stone to get me closer to becoming mandatory to fight for world titles. So uh, all focus is on Saturday night and then looking to, to get myself into a mandatory position. You've obviously fought different styles as a professional and, and especially against amateurs as well, but you feel that someone who's aggressive that's coming to win, we're going to see the best of you on Saturday night. Yeah, uh, I feel like... I haven't really faced an, an overly aggressive opponent as a professional yet, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, Tanya is an aggressive fighter. She's going to come. She's young. She's hungry. She's coming to win. And, and like I've always said, uh, that's when you're going to see the best me. And finally, of course, in the featherweight division, all the belts on the line on Saturday night. I know, you know Amanda Serrano is a couple of fights away from you. Your focus is just on Saturday night as well. But interesting to see how the belts lie at the, at the end of the night on Saturday. Yeah, I'll definitely be watching the main event with... Uh, eager eyes. Um, I, I think that Cruz has been written off a little bit for this fight. I think she's, she's going to be a good challenge for Serrano and I'm excited to see how that goes. And um, They're both definitely potential future opponents for me, hopefully in 2023. So I'll definitely be watching very closely. Well, fantastic fight. Sky Nicholson against Tanya Alvarez. 5-0 against 7-0. WBC silver featherweight title on the line. Now at the IBF intercontinental title in 122 pound division. Uh, Avril, we'll start with you. You were going to fight Ebony Bridges for the world title last year. Obviously, the mandatory got put on her. You've been looking for this big opportunity. You're undefeated as a professional. A great fight for you. It was worth the wait here at Madison Square Garden. This is what you've been dreaming of. Yeah, exactly. Here we are, Eddie. We made it, finally. So you're right. I was very disappointed that the fight with Ebony last year fell through. And uh, I hope that still that fight can happen later this year once her hand is better. But in the meantime, I have uh, an exciting fight with Remla. It's a big step up for both of us. And uh, like Sky said, that's when it brings out your best performances. So I'm really excited. Um, this, is a, this is what I've been training for. How important is it to take this opportunity? I know that you've been looking for these big opportunities. You've been dedicating yourself to the sport. But victory for you on Saturday night would put you in an unbelievable position to go on and challenge for the world title. Opportunities like this don't come around often. You have to grab it with both hands. Yeah, of course. And that's why I'm going up a weight division for this fight. It's an opportunity that I'm willing to take because, you know, a win against Rumla is going to really put my name in the lights and prove what I can do and that I deserve to be here. Thanks, Avril. Ramla, um, it's been a great run for you around the world as well. You boxed at Madison Square Garden before, boxed in America. Saudi last time was, was an incredible experience as well. Based yourself here now with a tremendous team and a great camp. I guess it kind of gets a bit serious now. This is what you want, isn't it? You know, you want these real fights. Again, as I said, you want opponents that are coming to win. Oh, 100%. I mean, I wouldn't have, you know, left everything back home in London to base myself in LA, you know, not know anyone and just commit myself full-time to training. But, you know, I love the sport and I love, you know, the opportunities to learn, to grow, to get better. And that's exactly what this fight is on Saturday. It's an opportunity to showcase how good uh, I have become training in L.A. with uh, an incredible team. I'm a hungry opponent, Everell Matthew. I'm sure you've watched before, been looking for this opportunity. Won't be an easy task. Someone that's very hungry for victory as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, you always want to get in the ring with somebody who's coming to win, not somebody who's just wants, it's just, it's just there. So, and, and I feel like when you are put in those positions against an opponent that's coming to win, that, that brings out the best in you as well. So I feel like I'm just going to perform even better on Saturday. And finally, same kind of question. We know you're focused on Saturday night, but World Championships at 122 pounds. You've got Ellie Scottney set to fight Shanika Johnson. We have Malin Rivas. Um, a lot of opportunities there and, and a big moment for you in your first championship fight. Oh, 100%. Um, the one I'm eyeing, though, is the WBC with Yemileth uh, Mercado. Um, and I know that will be a great fight and I'm hoping to get a fight like that in 2023. Um, yeah, women's boxing is very exciting at the moment. For sure. Firstly, 
first championship for you, Avril Mathy, to get through on Saturday night. Another tremendous fight, Ramler Ali against Avril Mathy. Two great championship fights up here. We're going to have a head-to-head -head up here before we move to our next fights. Thank you. You're going to see the head-to-head -head in just a few moments. Ramla Ali taking on Avril Mathis, Sky Nicholson, Tanya Alvarez. Those are the final two bouts coming up on our Before the Bell card on Saturday night. And for Ramla Ali, Avril Mathi, two undefeated fighters going up for a regional title. Same thing with Nicholson and Alvarez. This is the next step. It's a stepping stone fight for all these competitors as we see Nicholson and Alvarez. No handshake at the end there. Keep that in mind. Nicholson and Alvarez coming up. Ten rounds. Another ten-round test for Sky Nicholson. Alvarez trying to stay undefeated in her first fight out of Spain. As we take a look at Ramla Ali and Avril Mathi. And 10 rounds for the vacant IBF Intercontinental Bantamweight title, 122 pounds. Mind you, Matthew is moving up in weight class naturally, a 118 pounder. And we'll see if that comes into play at all. You have two long fighters going at it at 122 pounds. We may have Rama Ali coming up, joining us here in the studio as she looks to improve to 8-0 in her first 10 round fight. Of course, she made history back over the summer on the Usyk Joshua card and becoming a uh, part of the first women's match in Saudi Arabian history to take place in Saudi Arabia. And now she returns to New York City, a place that she's fought before, and she will try to remain undefeated, pave her way into a title shot, perhaps as soon as later on this year in 2023. Of course, Sky Nicholson, Tanya Alvarez, that is going to be the main fight on our Before the Bell undercard. It all starts up at 4.15 Eastern time on Saturday inside the Hulu Theater. The main card on the zone beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern time. The last two uh, set of fighters that we are going to be seeing, of course, Alicia Bumgarner going up against Ella Mekhaled, and then Amanda Serrano and Erica Cruz. The two fights for undisputed rights. The first at 130 pounds, the main event at 126 pounds, all coming up this Saturday from New York City's Madison Square Garden. Bumgarner 13 and 1 with seven knockouts. Mekhaled 15 and 1 with three KOs. And there you see Ramla Ali. Again, trying to stay undefeated. We're going to have her join us here in studio. Ramla, welcome She's stage side. <laughs> we are going You've to stay on Here we are. <laughs> yes. 7 and 0. Oh. Yeah. Look at it become 8 and 0. Oh, first 10 round fight. Mm -hmm. Something that we talked about earlier this week the power. Two yeah. knockouts, your last three fights. Yeah. Where do you assess your power to be right now as you head into Saturday? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, there's still a lot of work to do on the power. Like, I, you know, you shouldn't let knockouts get to your head sometimes because then you become too complacent. And, you know, the first thing that I did after Saudi was go straight back into the gym and use that opportunity to, to learn, to grow, to develop, to learn new things, you know, to sit down more on my shorts and gain more power. So, um, yeah, slowly, slowly we're working and I'm incredibly blessed to have uh, an amazing team around me for sure. That team? Your, it's going to be your, your fourth fight under the tutelage of Manny Robles? Yes. Is that correct? Fourth yes, fight? yes, yes. Biggest thing that stands out to you since working with Manny? Um, first thing I noticed was that I don't sit down enough on my shots, and that's the one thing that him, Edgar, and his son Manny Jr. tried to change. And I feel like they have over time, over being there. Um, and I, I just love how they, how they teach, you know? Everybody gets equal amount of love, you know? depending on where you are in the camp how many rounds of pads but everybody everybody gets one-on-one -on -one time with the coach and 
that is that that just shows how much they love the sport and how much they love boxing the fact that they can you know show the same amount of love to somebody who's 27 and 0 compared to somebody who's 1 and 0 do you know what i mean Saturday night. Safe to say, yeah. Avril Mathy will be the longest opponent that you're going to be facing in your pro career. What does that mean, longest? Longest reach. Oh, yeah. Equal, <laughs> equal in height. Yes, yes, yes. Equal in height. Although the uh, high heels uh, might have thrown people off today, but I, I think um, we are like similar in height, yeah, for sure. All right, Ramla, thanks a lot. Hey, you know, you speak it into existence, right? Of course. All don't. Right. What is this trying, trying? <laughs> We are going to be 8-0 on Saturday, for sure. Thank you for joining us here. We'll talk to you throughout Fight Week. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Let's go back up to the stage with Eddie. Well, welcome back. Before we go to our two undisputed championships, another two tremendous fights up here on Saturday night. Firstly, Richardson Hitchens against Jonathan Bowser. 15-0 against 17-0. Brooklyn against Puerto Rico. Uh, what a great fight between two aspiring 140-pound championship Runners uh, in a fantastic division right now. And, of course, Shadesia Green against Ellen Sederus as well. What a fight this is. I mean, I've been hearing so much about you, Shadesia. And, of course, Erin, we saw you on that historic card last time out. Taylor Serrano at Madison Square Garden against Franchon Cruz de Zern in a great undisputed matchup as well. Let's start with you, first of all. Back-to-back -back fights at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. It's, it's never too bad, is it? No, it's great to be back here. Thank you. <laughs> Last time out against Franchon, it was, it was a tremendous battle. I mean, uh, both of you just went at it, went to war from the first round, learned a lot from that experience, and another tough fight against a young, hungry fighter at the weekend. Yeah, this is going to be a great fight on Saturday. Uh, I'm just looking forward to, to, to enter the ring on Saturday. So We're seeing, you know, continuously in women's boxing, female fighters just willing time and time again to be in big fights, to be in tough fights. Last time you had a, an epic fight at Madison Square Garden, you know, it would have been quite normal to have a couple of easy ones, but it doesn't seem to happen in women's boxing. You want to get straight back in there for big championships. Yeah, I'm so ready to step in the ring. So, no, it's not an easy fight. Uh, it's never an easy fight. Um, and I'm confident and I'm so ready for this. Good. Well, welcome back to Madison Thank Square Garden. Thank you welcome. Um, I've been hearing a lot about you. I know you sent me a couple of uh, messages in the past, just looking for opportunities. Welcome and congratulations on joining the MVP team. Obviously, you're on this card. I mean, you're really taking a huge step up here. Everyone talks about your ability and your potential, but this is a bona fide, former unified world champion who we know can really fight. The perfect fight to showcase your talent. Absolutely. I respect Elaine so much. Um, like I said, she's a former world champion, so I, you know, show respect by preparing myself 150% to, to go into, you know, a battle-tested former champion Saturday night, and I plan on being victorious. Tell us about that struggle of, of looking for the opportunity. I mean, you know, when you look at fighters like Alicia Baumgarten, the same thing, you know, just probably a year and a half ago, just desperate for any opportunity that might come her way. You know, now you look at it and one fight away from her becoming undisputed champion as well. A message really to young fighters out there, especially female fighters, to, to keep grinding away, keep looking for the opportunities. And like you, they will come. Yes, of course. Stay the course. Um, trust the process. And that's what I did. I paid my dues to the sport and I continuously was consistently in the gym and working hard. And I knew that my opportunity would showcase itself. And here we are today, February 4th, 2023. Boxing fans around the world will get to see you on Saturday. What should they expect? 11 wins, 10 knockouts. A lot of people talking about your punch power as well. That's what we should look out for. And I'm sure you'll say you've got the skills as well, but you know, a heavy handed fighter and we should be looking for a great fight between you two at the weekend. My record showcases the, 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 the power, but like I said, I have the boxing ability. I can box on the outside. I can fight on the inside. So I'm looking to showcase myself uh, as a well-renowned fighter, one of the best female fighters you've ever seen. Well, can't wait to see it in action. It's a tremendous fight. Shadisha Green against Ellen Sideros on Saturday night, looking to make their way for a shot at the world title. And this one as well is a cracker. Jonathan, I'll start with you. Um, what a great fight this is. This is what we want in boxing. Two young fighters looking for a shot at the world title. 17-0 against 15-0. Big crowd on Saturday night. Ready to go. First of all, I want to say thank you for this opportunity to be here. And all I have to say is that I worked really hard. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, but we got the fight. And we're ready. 
Richards and Hitchens, fantastic amateur, got good pedigree as well. Should be a great fight between you two. But when you look at the division, you know, Josh Taylor, Regis Progre, probably Devin Haney moving up, Javonta Davis, Ryan Garcia on their way to 140 as well. This opens up so many doors for you for, for some huge fights this year. I mean, we're ready for everybody. We already proved that in the amateurs, um, uh, he knows who I am, like I spoke him before. Um, I come from the same group as them, Jack Warham, all of them, so they know who I am too, so we're ready for everybody. So you know who he is. You rate this guy? Yeah. Good fighter? I know. You, you believe you can beat him? Hell yeah. I'm ready for it. Richardson, welcome. We had a great time down at Cops and Kids uh, in, in Brooklyn this week. This is kind of what you've been waiting for. Nice and busy, just coming off a win in November. You've got the activity, no excuses. This is the platform you asked for. These are the fights that you've asked for. You must make it count on Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. Uh, I think that I've been here before. I've been in anticipated fights. I've beat former world champions. I've beat uh, prospects and a lot of great fighters. He never fought nobody. He, for him to say he's ready, he never even been past an eight-rounder. He's fought a lot of guys with built-up records, guys that he couldn't take out. Bums, I knocked out. Easy. We'll see about it. Um, we'll see like about you said, it. we sparred we'll before. We, we sparred we'll spar before. It. You tasted we a piece no of power. it. I power. Okay. And what you got? You got never power. heard it. I got power. I bet you I hurt you before you hurt me. Yeah, you can have it. Okay. You'll see. My power. You know. His dad. His dad. His dad is saying don't. His dad is saying don't run. You know. His dad is saying don't run, but I bet you he'd be out of there before me. Okay. You know what? Okay. So Saturday, toe to toe. I got heart, bro. We what don't. you think? You, what you, you, you think I got here from having wrong. no heart? What you do wrong? You think I got here from having no heart? Stay Olympian? Stay there I won't run. I bet you run before me. All right, back. Okay. All right. Don't hold me neither. I won't. All right. I'm going to be holding. I'll see. All right. That's all you do, because you're scared. Yeah, that, talk, talk. I don't talk a lot. Yeah, dad going to see. Uh, I don't do much talking. Okay. That's you, it. That's you know it. you can't fuck with me. That's it. Okay. You know. No, I know what? We sparred. A hundred times. Hey, I done, you, know. you tasted this already. We'll you see. tasted this already. We'll see? What you gonna do? You, you've sparred a hundred. Knock the fuck out. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> all right. We'll see. All right. You should have knocked uh, all them other guys. You 17, 17 army knockouts? No. Okay. And what I'm power? What power? How many knockouts you power? got? You know the power. We tasted it. <laughs> I, I beat you the shit out of you me. already, bro. When? <laughs> no, this guy's crazy. Before. What are we talking about? All right. So you see Saturday. You me. You see Saturday. Are you new? You see, Saturday. 16 ounces, not the same eight ounces, bro. Well, I hope you know that. I hope you know that. I bet you won't look as light skin. You look red right. on Saturday. Right. Your face gonna be fucked see. up. See? All right, all right. Keep we'll talking. See. Cause you gonna get it regardless. So just talk. Right. Fuck it. You gonna all get right. it regardless. All right. We'll see. Daddy gonna see. Yeah. You, y'all didn't want to take the fight. We never. You talk, this you guy talk never won nothing in the amateurs. I did. He never made it to the Golden Glove Nationals. I did. I did. did you even go to the Golden Glove Nationals? I did. Wait, you went to the Golden Glove Nationals? I won. To so a junior Golden Glove. To so junior Golden Glove. Look, that's 14, 15. I'm talking about national Golden Gloves. You couldn't I even make, make it out your state. You, you couldn't even make it. You didn't you make it. Where, you did you make, where did you make the Olympic? Where? You, I where? beat everybody. Eight. I beat Nine, everybody. Nine, you never beat nobody. Did you even make it to Puerto Rico? Did you even make it to Puerto Rico? I couldn't because my age. But you're going to see Saturday where it's level. You're going to see Saturday. Levels. Nah. You gonna see. You gonna see. All right. That big mouth of yours. You'll see. What you do is talk. You talk. My record, prove it. Mine. You, you, you see my I resume. Who you be? Who you for? Who you for? Who I for? Yeah. Come on. Go look at Tell it. Me. Go look at it. Tell me. Go look at my box record. Ooh. Go look at my box. I be fighters better than you. I be fighters that done who? more than you in boxing. That's all you say. Who? You never even fought. That. You never fought Alamo? a ten round fight, bro. Who's How Alamo? Who's you say Who's you Alamo? Who's the other guy? Ranked number five. I knocked him out. Yeah, who was on the bottom? I knocked him out. Mendez, same. former world champion. It's not the same. All right, you're going to see. Oh, we'll see. All right. All right. I'm going to show you something. Yeah, I'll show you too. It's all right. Jonathan, you, you've sparred many rounds. I guess everybody knows this guy has skill. The, the one question mark is the power. Does he have power and does he have power to hurt you on Ooh. Saturday night? This guy. You've sparred. She has more power than him. I sparred her. I, I have. I sparred her before. She has more power than him. That's for her before. All right, so look. So Saturday, since I got no power, I'm expecting you to just come walk at me. Just walk me down. Come, just come. I will walk. Okay. And you will go you on. You walk into some shit. You, yeah. All right, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm going to see your go feet ahead. running. Okay, all right. Oh, I'm going to see. Richardson, one 
criticism in the past. You won last time by knockout. That was a great performance. Liam Paro went the distance with Alamo as well. People talk about your power. You, you're confident in your power. Do you, I, you believe you can take this guy I out inside no the distance? I got no power, but Alamo never been knocked out. Was ranked number five for the world title. And I stopped him. That's the thing. Right? You know, he, I got no power, he, but guys. Two weeks, this guy, but listen, I this is how you know people know about boxing. To fight you, bro. He's saying I got no power, right, Eddie? He's saying I got no power, but... He fought nothing but bums. We know this. If you fight, if you never passed eight rounders, you never fought no world fighters. You never even fought close to a world title. He fought bums that I knocked out and that he went eight rounds with struggling. And I knocked him out. So I got no power. And you talking about I'm be running. Who are you talking uh, about? That's the thing. Who are you talking you, about? Go look at box rec, bro. Do your homework. When you fight somebody, go do your homework. We have That's similar opponents. You I fight, knocked out. You fought one you fighter fight. that I fought. In two fighters. You fought, two fighters. You fought, you fought, fought him in 2022. Fighters. Talking about. Did you knock him out? We talking about. Did you knock him out? It's different. Wow. It's different. Fighters are different. I'm going to knock you out. All right, bet. We'll see. You're going to do shit. Uh, Look at you. You're scared. Look at you. That's why you talk so much. Nah, you nobody, bro. You nobody. You were nobody. I fought fighters it. way better than the amateurs. Right, you never even shit. fought an elite I, level in the amateurs. Who know, did you beat in the amateurs? You know, nobody. Nobody. Sorry. So you're going to come fuck with me? All the right, top we'll see. young fighter in boxing? I'm, I'm a prospect, too. Nigga, a prospect. I'm a contender. I'm going to take king. that away from you. That's mine. <laughs> all right. That's just mine. That's my name all, all over it. Well, I'm excited. Who's excited to see this fight on Saturday night? Right? Okay. And I'm also from Jersey. Puerto Sorry? Rico and Jersey. I'm from Puerto Rico. You couldn't make it out of Jersey, Eddie. You know, Golden Gloves, you fight in your state. Like, you got to beat people in your state and they go to the way. He couldn't even make it past the Golden Gloves. 2015, he lost to a guy that I beat the shit out of. You know, like, little... Little show fights, you be like, I'm gonna just well, work, when do you, when work you on somebody. When do you say boxing? The, the boxing down the you Was you on it? I won it. Yeah, I won it. Nigga, you won it when everybody was gone. When? when we all left after the Olympics. Why? You was not beating me. Well, you was not beating Gary. Uh, well, you was not beating Boots. You well, didn't fuck um, with none of us. I'm asking you a question real quick. W which one you got? Um, what medal you got in the Olympics? None. Did you go there to the Olympics? Go. What's the point of not even making it? You didn't even qualify. You didn't make it. This guy. Yo, you talking shit? He gonna see something. I'm gonna. Oh, you only five pounds. What are you talking? You talking? You're gonna see, huh? I ain't gonna lose to him. You will. You will. What you gonna come put pressure? Huh? I'm gonna fuck you up. All right, we'll see. You're gonna be running like a bitch, and I'm gonna be right there like a shark, just fucking going at it. I've I have, I've been training for eight months, bro. I haven't stopped. And you think I stopped? Nah, I just whooped him a few months ago. Yeah, right, that's different. Stop? Who you for? Nobody. Who you for? Huh? Who you for? I fought somebody. <laughs> Better than the what guy you fought. <laughs> Who? So you only give it. So you, know, Lewis, you know how long you give that guy out. to train three weeks? Huh? You give that guy to train three weeks. Because no, I know him. I'm knock him off at eight months. Huh? Skill pay the bills. Alam only trained train for a month. What? Three weeks. He only trained for three weeks when he fought you. Because I know him, because I know him, because I know him. Yeah, you're going to, ask huh? him how he tastes, you're going to taste the same thing he tasted a few months ago. He tasted it too with me? All right, you're going to go right back to Puerto Rico, sad. It's 18 ounces, and he felt it, my name. You're going to feel it. Okay. That's what really going to feel that shit. I ain't worried about it, I've been boxing my whole life. I yeah, felt, me I too. Felt, we've been in the ring before, right? Yeah, we so have. Why, why I'm not talking about your power like this? Huh? Why I never felt no power? We've been in the ring. You're not going to say it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm I'm not come out here and be say, oh, you got power. Yo, you I know. beat the shit out of this guy. You know, you know, right? like, that's crazy. Fighters really have confidence. Like, I'm not Alamo. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. We'll see. We'll see. Right. I could listen to this all day, to be honest with you. But we have got a couple of undisputed fights to go. One thing, I knew this was going to be a great fight. I can't wait to see this fight. We might have to take it off the bill and put it as his own main event. But no. We're going to give you value on the zone and in Madison Square Garden on Saturday night. 15 and 0 against 17 and 0. I can't wait to see it. Tremendous fight. Green Cedaros as well. Just two fantastic fights on this card. Well done, you two. We should have more of that. I like it. No, yeah, I'm just saying. He think I'm Michael Williams. <laughs> I ain't Michael Williams. I ain't no Michael Williams Jr. This is different. This is a real skills, real fighter. He talking shit. It's all right. So my eyes, but come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> yo, these guys are doing the wrong homework. He just said I've been down before by Trayshawn Wiggins. Come watch the fight, bro. Mr. Bowser, you confident in your son on Saturday night? Yeah. Of course. You confident? Yeah, I am me. 
That was the expe- that was the answer I was expecting. I like Thank the you. chain. I thought Vichu can I can I wear it to the after party? I don't think you're gonna have an after party, bro. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So you're gonna be all fucked up. <laughs> you gonna fuck me up? Right, you, how, what round are you gonna stop me? Let me hear this. You gonna knock me out? I don't talk a lot of shit. You just talk a shit. Just call me a bitch and all that. Right. I might just stay quiet then. Okay. We'll you know, see. You say gonna beat the shadow me. I want to see that. It's different. Shit. Ten rounds. It's different. With a fighter that can fight. All right. Under TV. You ready for that? Yeah, I am. I was born for this shit. You sure? Hell yeah. I'm not no Tony Williams, Michael Williams. I'm gonna knock you out. Larry watch. Fryers. All right. Keep talking. Keep talking. All right. Keep talking. Okay. It's all right. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're gonna have head to heads up here. Thank you. Two tremendous fights. Well done, you two. Well done, everybody. Back shortly. Thank you. That was excellent. We had John Bowser's father pulling up YouTube coverage uh, in, in the stands there. Regardless of how you feel in this room right now, you cannot debate Richardson Hitchens now two for two in creating some sparks between he and his opponent at these matchroom press conferences. We saw it in Cleveland on Love Spark, and here we do it with uh, Serrano Cruz. But yes, a matchup pitting two undefeated fighters against one another, each have seven knockouts to their name, and that was wildly entertaining and uh, amplified what we're going to see in the main card this Saturday night. But there you see Shadeja Green and Elin Sederus going to be going at it in a WBC title eliminator. Deja Green, 11 and 0, 10 knockouts from nearby Patterson, New Jersey. She is going for her ninth straight stoppage win. Sederus trying to get back on track after her first loss, which came in the big room to French on Cruz de Zern back in April. And there it is, Richardson Hitchens and John Bowser. 10 rounds for Hitchens' IBF North American Super Lightweight title and the vacant WBC U.S. Super Lightweight title. John Bowser trying to pick up his biggest win to date. Took care of Tony Lewis in this building last year in his most recent bout. And of course, Richardson Hitchens stopping Omar Alamo back in Cleveland in early November. Again, 10 rounds with two regional belts on the line. There you see Richardson Hitchens. He's going to join us here in the studio in a moment. And we welcome in the Brooklyn native. Good to have you here. I got to ask you, I know you two knew each other from the past. He's from New Jersey. You're from Brooklyn. Was there bad blood, though, leading up to today? No, nah, he just know. He just know when he in a fight. Uh, he know who I am. I know who he is. But like I said, he's been in the ring with me before. He tasted some of this. So he's just going to taste some more on February 4th. That's all it is. I got to ask you, well, I think a big reason why you said uh, Matchroom appeal to you is because they're going to keep you active. They're going to stay busy. This is going to be your quickest turnaround in four years. How do you approach getting right back into training camp? Uh, I mean, just I've always a guy that's always in the gym, so it's just about staying focused, staying ready, and uh, just uh, preparing myself for any type of challenge possible. You're from Brooklyn. You've never fought in this building as a pro. Crazy, you, right? you frequented Barclays Center in Brooklyn, but what is it going to mean to you to be in Madison Square Garden as a pro? Um, it's going to be just a great night. I just want to feel that New York energy. I know uh, the New York support is going to be heavy. He's going to have some Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican fans because, you know, Amanda Serrano is the main event. So I'm pretty sure some of her fans are going to gravitate towards him. And uh, it's just going to be a great night of boxing. So all I, got, all I can do is just stay focused, stay 
stay calm and just go out there and do what I do best. There's going to be plenty of support coming up from Brooklyn, and I know you were able to go back. Eddie mentioned it, too. You and him taking a trip to Cops and Kids. Yeah. You got a big smile on your face here. What was that like being able to bring Eddie through those doors where a lot of matchroom fighters, a lot of pro fighters have gone through that program, especially you? Um, it's, it's just great because the kids get to see somebody like Eddie. You know, Eddie's a, a legendary uh, promoter, and um, the kids just... They just being close to greatness, seeing a young fighter like me that's chasing his dreams and uh, accomplishing things in boxing, and hopefully they want to get to where I'm at one day. And um, you know, it's just it's just uh, great for the young kids. I just want to keep inspiring the kids, keep inspiring the kids from especially from my city, uh, and, and just uh, keep doing big things. Whose idea was that? Is that yours? Uh, yeah, I just I wanted Eddie to come through, see some of the uh, the kids, and uh, Eddie wanted to do it. Eddie also wanted to come through and give back. So it's kind of both of us. You've been away from New York in terms of fight nights for quite a while now. I know we mentioned fighting here in, in MSG, but overall to kind of have a home fight, how does that help you during this type of week? Because um, the New York fans, they always see me on TV fighting. There are a lot of people be excited when I'm fighting on TV, so for them to be able to come to the venue and actually watch me fight, and it's a great fight. It's not like I'm just coming home fighting a duck. I'm fighting a kid that really thinks he's going to win. And, uh, an undefeated fight is a guy that don't know how to lose, so I got to teach him that on uh, Saturday. And I just got to go out there and give him my best. And uh, me and my team is ready. We ready. All right, your power was called into question up there on the stage, giving you one last moment here before Saturday night to kind of pump your chest. Let everyone know what you feel about your power. I mean, like I said, uh, you talking about a guy that have more fights than me, but the same amount of knockouts saying I have no power. A guy that I done hurt before in sparring. And I mean... A guy that, like I said, we fought similar opponents, guys that were scrubs, and I got him out of here, and he couldn't. So the power, the, the name of the game is not power. The name of the game is skills, and skills pay the bills. So that's, I'm going to get my bills paid. WBC regional belt on the line. Obviously, you could add to your collection here, mm -hmm. surge up the rankings. This is, uh, in a way, not, not a crossroads fight per se, but this is going to lead you down one path or another. When you think about it that way, what comes to mind? Win. No, for this, the main object from when we first came in this was to win. So it don't matter for the WBC regional belt, WBC title belt is to win. Richardson, thanks for the time. We'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the weigh-in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Richardson Hitchens joining us here in studio after a very uh, entertaining back and forth between he and John Bowser as we get set to go in moments as we will welcome in the four fighters on the co-feature, the main bout as well this Saturday night. But that was really entertaining. You get kind of have to feel for Shadeza Green and Elin Sederus up there as well. It was a while since they talked, and you had Hitchens and Bowser exchanging words back and forth, but we are getting ready to go for our two undisputed bouts that will take place this Saturday night in New York City. Again, barring a draw of some sort, we are going to be crowning two undisputed champions, the seventh and eighth undisputed champions of the four-belt era in women's boxing history, Puerto Rico, could have their first undisputed champion, Amanda Serrano. Mexico could have its second with Erica Cruz. Alicia Bumgarner, since exploding onto the scene in late 2021, when she upset Terry Harper, it feels like she's this lead-type fighter. The pressure continues to increase, and she keeps continuing to get better with each fight. Uh, most recently, in her victory in a thrilling manner over Michaela Mayer in October, she has become a pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport of women's boxing back on her u.s soil she has a chance at completing that puzzle at 130 pounds and taking the final piece ellen michelad standing in her way she fought delphine pursuing she looked very impressive in doing so as well despite taking a loss there she is going for undisputed as well against alicia bumgarner so four fighters going at it with plenty on the line and then you kind of peek forward into 2023 the big question is, will that rematch between Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor take place at some point in 2023? Serrano obviously has to get through Saturday night first, accomplish something that is really high on her to-do list, that is become undisputed at 126 pounds. Again, she feels this is her signature weight class. She's uh, tasted some hardware throughout a, a, a number of divisions here throughout her illustrious career. But as she enters year 14 as a pro, she has a chance at becoming undisputed. And as we await the arrival of the fighters here stage size, we're bringing Eddie Hearn into the studio. So you go from one platform to another here. It's going to be less hostile. Well, this is what happens. Yeah. They're trying to stand all the belts up on the table. <laughs> and it was like, this is taking some time. So Eddie, can you go and talk? 
<laughs> I'm now a professional filler. Well, you know? Richardson and Fauza, they gave oh, you a lot of breathing amazing. time. I didn't, I didn't know to expect that. I mean, uh, Richardson is a character, but that's what you want. You know, there's a lot of people in boxing talking about that being a great fight, 15-0 and 0 against 17-0. and 0, But after that, I was going to say five minutes of entertainment. When I say 15 minutes yeah. of entertainment, I'm excited for the fight. And, you know, that's what you want. You want people to tune in, to watch stuff like that, to see the passion, to see the belief, and tune into a great fight in the 140-pound division. And this is two straight press conferences with Richardson Hitchens where we've seen that flavor. Yeah, that and element. listen, and he might fight Montana Love if he wins this fight. So that would be even more exciting. One of the big reasons why he was an attractive uh, client to try and pursue? Uh, uh, an outstanding amateur, you know, an outstanding amateur obviously was with Mayweather Promotions, made the move to Matchroom, um, just a very good fighter. People talk about, you know, the one thing lacking for Richardson Hitchens could be the power, but you did see him stop Alamo in the last fight, who hadn't been stopped. And sometimes it takes people time to grow into, you know, their physique, to grow into the professional game, to start stopping people. If Bowser is going to actually come and, and fight like he says he is, that's the kind of style that's going to suit Richardson Hitchens. And after what he said up there, he can't fight off the back foot and move around for 10 rounds. So looking forward to seeing a good fight. Hopefully Richardson is prepared to be aggressive. And if he can take this guy out, I think it's a big statement. I think the power department, we just had Richardson up on stage. He kind of alluded to it. The power is kind of where he operates with a chip on his shoulder because he wants to prove that he does have that power. Let's move on to these two undisputed fights. Mm. Alicia Bumgarner between bursting onto the scene, taking care of Terry Harper up until now, feels like she gets stronger with each pressure-filled situation does it remind you of an, another ascension in your career as a promoter you know, i think when you look at fighters you look at the path that they've been on um some fighters come off a uh, tremendous amateur career you know they walk into a big promotional contract they walk into endorsement deals they walk into easy development fights then you have fighters like alicia baumgartner that didn't have that pleasure you know i think it was like two years ago she sent me a message saying look i feel like i can become a major star in the sport i just need opportunity somehow you know, she managed to get the Terry Harper fight. She became a world champion in the UK. She defended it in the UK. And then the fight came up against Michaela Meyer, you know, one of the biggest stars in the sport, a unified championship fight, big money fight on a big card. She won that fight, and now she's one fight away from becoming undisputed champion. She's already a star in the sport, but victory on Saturday can put her on a whole other level, can open the doors to a Katie Taylor fight, a Chantel Cameron fight between undisputed, maybe even an Amanda Serrano fight as well. But... This is going to be a tough fight against Mekalev. You know, it's not going to be an easy fight. She's very tough. She had a tremendous fight with Delphine Passoon last time out. And uh, at least she's excited. You know, a real star of the sport. We're going to get you uh, out back to the stage so I could throw it to you back on the Good. stage. Is okay. that cool? Thanks. Eddie Sheheran going back to the stage. Chat. As you see, the belt's all situated nicely. It makes a great point with uh, Mekalev and her defeat against Delphine Pursun, what she experienced was a high volume number of punches. That's obviously going to, uh, likely going to slow down with Baumgartner and how things slow down there and how she takes that into uh, potentially her advantage is something that we are going to uh, have answered on Saturday night between Baumgartner and Mechalad. But we are moments away from introducing those two fighters. It is going to be an interesting night here in the Hulu Theater. Again, the prospect of just crowning two new undisputed champions right there as we open up our schedule here for 2023. There you see the champ, Alicia Bumgarner, unifying the title against Michaela Mayer back in October. And we also heard the first couple of hints earlier on this week that she is entertaining a rematch with Mayer, perhaps down the road, wants to take care of business here in 2023. First up, of course, becoming undisputed at 130 pounds this Saturday night against Ellen Mekalad. Let's go back to the stage with Eddie. Well, welcome back. How good was that? So many great fights on the card on Saturday night here at Madison Square Garden, live on zone around the world. And now we go to the two main fights on the card, the undisputed super featherweight championship of the world, the IBF, the WBA, the WBC, the IBO, and the Ring Magazine Championship, all on the line between Alicia Baumgartner, the unified world champion, and the challenger on Saturday night, Ellen Mekaled. Welcome. Um, Ellen, we'll start with you. Um, both of you similar in a way. I remember you reaching out to us as well to say, look, I'm, I'm losing faith with the sport of boxing. You know, uh, maybe it's time for me to, to look elsewhere 
in my life. You love boxing, but sometimes the opportunities just don't come. You had an unbelievable fight with Delphine Pursun, and now on Saturday night, you are one fight away from winning every one of these belts at Madison Square Garden. So it's amazing this opportunity, and, and you're ready to fight. Elle aime là, tu es euh, prête à, à te battre pour ce samedi, c'est une opportunité magnifique, tu as eu tes, tes moments de, de doute ces derniers, ces derniers temps, enfin ces dernières années, et là c'est une opportunité à saisir. Merci de, bah de, de m'accueillir, de me donner cette opportunité, je tiens quand même d'abord à dire à, merci à Sarafina, à Matchroom Boxing, donc à Eddie Hearn et à Marshall de King Promotion de me donner cette opportunité. C'est euh, un très bel enjeu, je suis très heureuse d'être ici. Et euh, après bon, mon combat contre Delphine Personne, aujourd'hui j'ai cette opportunité et, et je vais la saisir. Thank you very much for welcoming me, for giving me this opportunity. I uh, really want to thank uh, Sarafina, uh, Matchroom Promotions, uh, Marshall and Eddie Hearn. And uh, I'm going to seize this opportunity on Saturday, definitely. We've seen you in some great fights, we know you're very tough, Alicia loves to stand and fight. She's a, she's a big puncher herself. A lot of people saying that this will be a tremendous fight between you two. Beaucoup de gens disent que ça va être un, un combat magnifique entre vous deux. Uh, Alicia uh, aime puncher, c'est une puncheuse. Uh, à quoi vous vous attendez Je vais atteindre une grosse guerre parce que c'est vrai que c'est une puncheuse. Je pense aussi être une puncheuse. Alicia, c'est ce que je pense aujourd'hui, ce que je ressens aujourd'hui. Donc ce sera vraiment un très beau combat. I'm expecting a war because Alicia is a puncher. I'm a puncher too. And uh, I know um, how I feel today and this is going to be a great and a big fight. And finally, after everything that you've been through in boxing, what would it mean to you to capture every belt in the sport on Saturday night? Après tout ce que vous avez uh, traversé dans la, dans la boxe, qu'est-ce que ça signifierait pour vous de pouvoir avoir toutes ces ceintures samedi soir? Ça signifierait de... Ma récompense de ne plus jamais avoir abandonné et d'avoir continué à, à, à m'entraîner dur et surtout euh, prouver que, que je serai la meilleure. That would be the, the greatest reward for me for never giving up, for having uh, gone on practicing and training so hard and to prove that I'm the best. Oh, thank you, Ellen. Alicia, you know, you just said before we started the press conference, look at how far you've come. You know, unbelievable. Uh, I use you as an example to a lot of fighters who are just searching for the opportunity. You know, I said to Shadesia earlier up here, I remember you messaging me saying, look, any opportunity, six rounds, eight rounds, world championship fight, please just find me a chance. And once that chance came against Terry Harper, you became the world champion in the UK, you defended it in the UK, and then you had the big fight against Michaela Meyer, the undisputed, sorry, the unified championship fight that you went and won. Amazing to think three of those fights taking place in the UK, you're back now at Madison Square Garden, one fight away from becoming undisputed champion. Yes, it's a pleasure again just to see the belts up here, here being in New York. It's a blessing. I just take a deep breath just to know that my journey has been a process. It has been very rewarding. And again, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, just grit and never giving up. And that's why we're here today. And that's why I'm one step closer to becoming undisputed, as I mentioned plenty of times before. And I'm ready. I'm well prepared for this fight. I know you would have envisaged this opportunity years ago and you never gave up hope. But also at the same time, your life has changed a lot. You know, you've, you've done very well in the last three fights. You've won belts, you've made money. The hunger still burning with more desire than ever for Alicia Baumgartner. Yes, the hunger is still there. As I walked in the gym as an eight-year-old girl, I had a vision. I had a plan to become the best. And that's what I'm doing now here, just seeing it come alive. I'm just, I'm hungry and I love to fight. We know that, you know, with Tony and your team, the hard days and the hard spars in Detroit, you do love to fight. You are exciting. You like to stand and trade. You like to try and stop fights inside the distance. I think this is a tremendous fight. You know, Ellen likes to do the same as well. The WBA asked us to go down the rankings. You know, I think this is a much tougher fight than, than maybe the, the, the spot above her as well. But I know you like to finish these, these fights inside the distance, but expecting a, a tough fight on Saturday. Yes, I'm expecting her to come forward. You know, she is a tough fighter, but again, I know my assignment. I've worked very hard to get here, and I cannot let someone like her stop me. So, again, she's going to be in a fight, and I hope she's ready. And finally, already become 
a big star in this sport, but Saturday night, you believe, at Madison Square Garden, you make history as the undisputed super featherweight champion of the world. Yes, this Saturday I will become undisputed. I have been claiming this, and I speak it. And again, everybody will see an amazing performance. Well, we cannot wait. The undisputed super featherweight championship of the world is Baumgardner against Mechelev. Tremendous fight at Madison Square Garden on Saturday, live on the zone. We're going to face off up here now. Well, the 28-year-old from Detroit, ready to take the face off for her undisputed title opportunity. Alicia Bumgarner and Ellen Mechelad going at it in the co-feature of Serrano Cruz. It's a unique circumstance for Mechelad. She has a chance to become undisputed following her first pro defeat. Bumgarner, meanwhile, trying to complete the clean out at 130 pounds. Two fighters go their separate ways. As Alicia Bumgarner perhaps could join us here in the studio in a few moments. Again, 10 rounds for the undisputed super featherweight title. This is something that she said she's talked about. She's spoken to existence. She's dreaming about. This is something that has been on her mind for quite some time. And the opportunity coming to fruition after she defeated Michaela Meyer to unify the belts uh, in October in London. And we're going to be joined by Alicia in a few moments on stage champ welcome no stranger to this studio i know that but you're going to be in the co-feature back in the u.s i know it's not detroit but you're back on your home soil after putting in a lot of work overseas do you have time to reflect on that yes um again the journey has been amazing i'm so happy with everything and how everything went with going to the UK, with building my profile, with having these hard fights, with, again, proving myself over and over again. And again, we're going to prove, again, to the world why I'm the best and why I become undisputed this Saturday. Your journey to this point, people like to talk about it. They're like, hey, let's take time to go back. Is that difficult for you because you're kind of on that one track, undisputed mind with, with the mission ahead Saturday night? Um, no, we you know we have to, re we have to reflect. I think uh, that's something I always have always done and when you look back you see the journey and you appreciate it i appreciate the hard work again that i've put in over and over and over and again i'm still putting the work in and the work is never done how do you stay disciplined it's it's what i'm good at <laughs> <laughs> it's what i'm good at it's what i i dreamed of becoming something great and i know that it takes a lot of discipline and when you make it to the top you have to have even more discipline to stay on top what does it mean to have a lot of this support here? I know Sky Nicholson's in the front row, staying put, watching uh, you, you and Ellen at this press conference. You have Tony Harrison here documenting everything, just the support around you as you return and make a fight in the U.S. You know, the support has been amazing. Again, I feel the love. I feel just the genuine, genuine support that just everyone who's been supporting me. It means a lot. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me pushing forward to the bigger and better fights. And again, I'm just, I'm blessed. Mindset on the day of the fight? Good nerves, anxious, what what, what goes through your veins? Um, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to really put some hands on somebody. Like the fight with Michaela was great, but this time I got someone who wants to fight and I like to fight and I like to throw some, some bombs in there. So we want to get her out of there. We want to make a statement. And again, look good doing it. And that's what I'm, I'm best at. You see the table up there and it's just littered with hardware. Uh, having a tough time propping all the belts up. Just when you're sitting there in that moment thinking like, yeah, this is what I work toward. Maybe it's it's not surreal because I'm supposed to be here. Do you have that feeling? Um, yes, I know I belong here. But again, just seeing it, I'm just like, wow, here we are again. Just another fight, another challenge, another um, opportunity to to be even better. And that's what I strive to be, a better athlete, a better woman. And again, just being a spokesman for the sport of boxing. I know you were upstairs the night of Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano in that big arena. But here, the Hulu Theater, going to be packed, obviously. What are you anticipating as far as venue goes? You know, as the venue goes, I expect a sold out crowd. Again, we have not just me fighting, but Amanda fighting. We know what upstairs did. So again, I'm only 
looking forward to seeing this crowd be packed. All right, we have a surprise guest for you here in studio. Surprise guest. Oh, oh. Coming up straight from the front <laughs> row. Hey, boo. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Describe the dynamic between you two, because I know you met over the last year and you clicked really quick. So what's this friendship like? It's great. Again, like I mentioned before, it's great for women's boxing. It's great to see two women working together. This allows for young girls to see, you know, maybe two of their favorite fighters working together. And just again, you can make you can make it work in the, in the boxing game. And um, I think we're just a great, great story for young girls. I have to ask, because you kind of hinted to this in an interview when she invited you to Detroit. Did you know she was fighting on the same card? I want to say so, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think you, you made made some type of joke that maybe she didn't, but um, overall, training together, spending that week out, out in Detroit, what was it like for you coming over here before you hit New York? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, uh a five fight prospect getting to train alongside, spar with uh, a unified world champion uh, who's about to go undisputed. It doesn't get much better than that. It was an amazing experience just to be around um, someone like-minded with similar goals and ambitions. We're, we're on that same path and um, I'm, I'm on that same journey as her and it's just, yeah, it's been amazing. It's always good vibes around Alicia. We, we have fun and, and um, no, it's been, it's been a great time. How much of it is fun? How much do you guys talk about the game? We actually, we don't talk about boxing no. that much, yeah. uh, surprisingly. And I think that that's a good balance. You know, when we're in the gym, you know, we do what we do. But outside of that, it's just, you know, coming to ourselves and just supporting each other in that way. I think that's great. The biggest takeaway from stepping inside her gym, being around guys like Tony Harrison, just the work you're able to put into to a, a spot like that in the U.S.? Yeah, it was, like I said, it wasn't just um, development for this particular fight. That's development for my whole career, um, going and being in that camp. Uh, we had some great spas out there with some really great talent out in Detroit as well. So uh, we definitely, yeah, we made the most of a really good week out there. Uh, I'd love to do more camps with Alicia. Not trying to look ahead. you got business to tend to Saturday night, but how closely will both of you be watching the main event on Saturday? We will have our eyes glued to the ring. Again, this was, this is an a major fight for boxing and again for women's boxing we are moving the needle at an all-time high and so we have nothing but respect for the main event and i'm looking forward to it appreciate you both stopping by this studio go ahead what, what are you going to be looking forward to the most with with the main event no i'm excited i'm really excited to i'm, I'm on a bit earlier so i can i can sit back and enjoy the main card i'm really excited for alicia's fight i'm very excited for the main event uh it's going to be a great showcase of, of boxing not just women's boxing but boxing so no i can't wait sky nicholson the main bow on our before the bell program alicia bumgarner with a chance to be undisputed the co-feature for serrano cruz speaking of those two fighters they are up on the stage with Eddie Hearn. Thank you, Justin, and thank you, everybody here today. It's been a, a long press conference going through a tremendous card on Saturday night. Going to be a huge crowd at the Hulu Theatre at Madison Square Garden to witness a great card, but of course, the culmination, the main event, Amanda Serrano against Erica Cruz for the undisputed featherweight championship of the world. The absolute pinnacle of the sport for Erica Cruz, the WBA world champion, so many opportunities to fight in Mexico, but now on the biggest stage, an opportunity to change her life, to sit among the greats of female boxing as an undisputed champion. And for Amanda Serrano, who has given so much to the sport of boxing that has seen her win seven world championships across different weight classes, her dream always to become undisputed after giving us here back in April, the greatest night, I believe, in boxing history at Madison Square Garden. This is a tremendous, tremendous fight. Erica, we'll start with you. Uh, welcome. You've been looking for an opportunity like this for a long time. Every belt on the line at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night. Bienvenido en primer lugar. Obviamente has estado buscando una oportunidad como esta durante mucho, mucho tiempo. Ahora por todos los cinturones en juego el sábado por la noche. Eh, primeramente, muchas gracias. Gracias a Dios por esta oportunidad, por estar aquí. Es una oportunidad que he estado buscando y creo que es una oportunidad que me gané. Y el sábado eh, voy a, a morirme la raya y como toda buena mexicana. Gracias y gracias a Dios por todo lo que me da. So first and foremost, I have to uh, thank God for the opportunity and thank you to everyone here. Um, yes, it's an opportunity I've been looking for for a long time. On Saturday, I'm going to give absolutely everything as a good Mexican, give absolutely everything to win. And once again, thanks to God. A lot of people, of course, they talk about the previous Serrano-Taylor fight. 
Do you feel like you're being overlooked in this fight on Saturday night? It's good for you. There's little pressure. Everyone talking about Amanda Serrano as the favourite. But you're happy with that position and you're ready to cause what many would believe to be an upset on Saturday. Sí, obviamente, durante todo lo que se habla del previa de la pelea, quizás hay la oportunidad de que te pasan por alto. Es una oportunidad para ti porque hay casi no presión en esto y estás buscando lo que sería una sorpresa muy grande eh, para las personas que piensan en esta pelea. En realidad no estamos enfocados en, en el qué dirán ni en las redes sociales. Mi equipo y yo venimos concentrados nada más para esta pelea desde el día que supimos que íbamos a pelear con Amanda Serrano. Eh, no, no estamos distrayéndonos con nada. Me siento concentrada, muy contenta, agradecida con Dios, con la vida, con mi padre que es el que está conmigo en todo momento. Y pues solamente esperando el sábado porque México va a ser historia. So, no, to be honest, we're not focused in any way what people say. We don't pay attention to what's said on social media. I'm just completely focused in my team. As soon as we knew the date was to be scheduled to have this date, I knew that I was facing Amanda Serrano, there were no distractions. And I'm just really delighted. I'm really happy with God. And I also have to say thanks to my father, who's always with me at every, every moment. On Saturday night, it will be a historic moment for Mexico. And finally, I see your dad there clapping away for everything that you've been through, everything you've been through with your father. What would it mean to you to witness and be part of with him becoming undisputed champion on Saturday? Si hoy te veo tu padre ahí aplaudiendo, han sufrido mucho ustedes. Finalmente, ¿qué, qué significaría para ti, para tu padre, poder ganar el sábado por la noche? Eh, primero, pues yo creo que si Dios me permite y es su voluntad llevarnos la victoria, sería algo muy satisfactorio para mí, sería darle un poco a mi padre de todo lo que él me ha dado. Él sueña con tener a su campeona y si Dios no lo permite, eh, lo vamos a lograr. Agradezco a Dios por la vida de mi padre, por mi vida, por esta oportunidad, por toda la gente maravillosa que nos apoya y pues ojalá y, y las cosas salgan como, como lo deseamos, como lo hemos trabajado y pues... Si Dios lo desea, pues uh, me declaro victoriosa en el nombre sea de Dios. So first and foremost, you know, I have to say that um, I thank God for everything that I've been through. And I also, becoming champion would mean giving that bit back to my father. He had a dream that I would go on to be a world champion. So at first, I'm so appreciative of everything God has given me. And, you know, all the support that I've had from people. And I hope, God willing, that I can go on and be victorious on Saturday night. Thank you very much, Erica. Amanda? Well, you've got a real opponent here on Saturday night. I know everyone's, you know, you are the favourite going into this fight, but one thing you've been very focused on this week is this fight. You know the challenge that lays ahead, everything that you've achieved in your career, those seven different divisions, but I know this is what you've always wanted for yourself, for Puerto Rico, a chance to become undisputed champion on Saturday night. Definitely, but it wasn't just this week that I was concentrating on Erica Cruz. This whole camp only been Erica Cruz. You know, I know she's a tough Mexican fighter. She's a WBA champion. Um, she has the last piece of the puzzle. I have all the rest, and we both want the same thing. You know, we're both real champions, and that's what we're going to show come Saturday night. Um, the real winners are going to be the fans because it's going to be a, a fight in the phone booth. It's going to be punches and bunches, and I have all the respect for, for Erica Cruz for taking the fight and... It's a historic night for both of us, and I'm just can't wait. Last time out, you know, in a the, in the big room, unbelievable. People still talking about that as one of the greatest nights in this building. We're going to be full up again on Saturday night. The Puerto Rican fans back out again. But I know how, how important this undisputed piece is to you. You know, even you talk about the mega fights and Taylor and stuff like that. This is what you've always looked to achieve as a fighter, to win every belt in your weight class. Well, it hasn't always been, but now it's, the, it's the, my mindset. I want to become undisputed champion, being the first Puerto Rican undisputed champion. That's my goal. You know, Puerto Ricos have a division, I mean, champions in all the divisions, the seventh division world champion, the youngest champion, and now come Saturday, you know, God's willing, become the first undisputed champion coming out of Puerto Rico. So, yes, and it's at the weight division where I feel my best. I'm comfortable. It's my division. And finally, it's Puerto Rico against Mexico. You always say what you're going to do. You always fight with the same style, that all-action style. I remember when you fought Heather Hardy in, in this venue. It was unbelievable. Didn't take a step back. I saw you win by first-round knockout in this same venue as well. We know exactly what you're going to do, and we know what Eric is going to do. This is going to be a tremendous fight on Saturday. It's definitely going to be a great fight. You know, um, Erica Cruz, like I said, she's a, a Mexican champion. She's going to come. 
and I'm coming guns blazing. So it's going to be punches and punches, and it's going to be an amazing night. Like I said, the fans are going to be the winners because it's going to be a, a, a great night of fireworks and punches and action. <laughs> Absolutely. Amanda, Erica, thank you so much. This is a tremendous fight. The Undisputed Featherweight Championship of the World at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night, live on the zone around the world. This fight will be a cracker. So will Alicia Baumgartner against Mechaled. You saw Richard, his, Richardson Hitchens up here. Going to be a great fight. So much other talent on the card. A pure night of action from top to bottom on Saturday, culminating in the biggest prize in the sport, the Undisputed Championship. We look forward to a tremendous fight. We're going to face off these two great champions up here now. We'll see you for the weigh-in here tomorrow and Saturday night. Don't forget to tune in to Zone all around the world to watch a fantastic card live from New York. Thank you. Eddie Hearn putting a bow on the press conference here in New York City. And the number of punches are going to be going through the roof in this main event between Amanda Serrano and Erica Cruz. The undisputed featherweight championship on the line this Saturday night at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. And the face-off moments away with all the hardware in front of them. Amanda Serrano, the WBC, WBO, IBF, IBO featherweight champion. Cruz, the WBA title holder. One fighter will walk out of here undisputed on Saturday night. You know, the two champions remaining cordial as they faced off their handshakes all around. It'll be nothing, uh, I'd say it won't be cordial, that's for sure. On Saturday night, it'll be just another chapter between the terrific history between Puerto Rico and Mexico in our great sport here at Madison Square Garden. We've seen it before in this building. We are going to see it again, but we will also see history because we could have a double dose of Undisputed this Saturday night on DAZN. And we are going to have a special guest join us in a few moments as you take a look at all the hardware here. We are joined by the seven division world champion, Amanda Serrano. Champ, all smiles up there, getting to this moment. You mentioned it near the end there, 126 pounds, your signature weight class. All the directions you're being pulled in here throughout your, your career over the last few years, how fulfilling will it be to have accomplished this at 126? Well, it's going to be truly amazing, um, you know, um, as a female fighter, and I've been in this game since 2009, I'm probably the longest reigning world champion in the sport right now, but I was always going where the opportunities were, and now that I was done chasing the divisions, I said, this is my time, I want to go back to where I feel the best, and that's featherweight, and, and we did that, and to... To have most of them but one and come Saturday night, have all of them, it's going to be truly amazing. Um, one of the greatest journeys of my life, in my career. It's hard to think 14 brilliant years as a professional, all the work you put in before <laughs> before being a pro. Not to make anyone feel like they're all, hey, we're the same age. So, But what, from, from that historic bout, late April with Katie Taylor, based on everything you've been through, is there anything that you pick from that fight that you take with you moving forward? Yeah, the confidence, you know, um, the confidence that I went in there with one of the best, the, the confidence that that arena was jam-packed with amazing, with the crowd was just amazing. So no matter where they put me, I'm going to be 100% um, confident. As great as that room was, the compactfulness in the Hulu Theater, the confines of the Hulu different. Theater. It's different. I love the Hulu Theater. It's like, it's my home. Like, I, I rather fight in the Hulu Theater. They, the, the fans are right there with you. They're, it's so intimate, and, and the fans are going to be celebrating with me that night. You're going to have a lot of Puerto Rican support <laughs> right over your shoulders, right oh, over the yes, ring. It's going to yes, be terrific. Yes, Champ, yes, thanks yes. for taking some time. We'll, uh, we'll see you yes, tomorrow yes. with the weigh-in. Yes. All right, have a good one. That's Amanda Serrano, again, seven-division world champion, going for that undisputed crown on Saturday night against Erica Cruz. That's going to wrap it up for us here with the press conference. Pl plenty more to go here in Fight Week in New York City. We will see you on these same matchroom channels tomorrow afternoon for the weigh-in at 1 p.m. Eastern. Then Saturday night, 
It all kicks off at 4.15 Eastern time with Before the Bell at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. For our entire Matchroom crew here in New York City, this is Justin Shackle. We'll talk to you tomorrow at the Wayne. Enjoy. a straight fighter. It doesn't get much bigger than this. She wants to make history.